Hello and welcome to Saturday Night Crafting. We're really late again. I apologize. My name is Sasha Reed and I have got some fun tonight for you with paper pads. So I've got a little addiction. I have been buying these paper boutique paper pads like crazy. I've probably got about six sets now and I love them. They are such good fun for making quick and easy cards without much thought. So tonight I'm gonna walk you through how you can make very dead simple cards using your paper pads how you can then step it up a notch and then how you can step it up a little bit more again. So I've kind of got sort of three versions in here. So I'm just sharing with you now the paper pads I'm using tonight. They come with a set of just plain papers, then you've got these beautiful design papers, um, and then you've got your sort of elements paper pad, which you'll see in just a second. These are all lovely and they're all designed to coordinate. And so here's the one that's the topper. So you get all these sentiments in it. And I've only just discovered these paper pads. I have been buying the A4 pads, which you'll see in a second. I had no idea that they did the eight by eight inch paper pads with all these gorgeous elements and toppers and things. So I'm really, really excited about them. I love all the little phrases. They're just really nice, easy going, beautiful, papers. <laughs> so I'm really excited as you can tell. Um, I've been using them quite a bit. So these are the ones that I've been buying for the past year and a half, two years. And I buy them just for the colored papers. And I had no idea that they coordinate with sets. So if you've got in your stash any kind of paper pad that has got any of these kind of elements. So here's a scrapbooking paper pad that I've got in my stash. And it's got some of these elements in there. Sometimes it has six by six ones. Sometimes it has these little ones that you can cut apart. I've gone ahead and cut one sheet apart. I've also got this Allison teal paper pad which I picked up from Craft Stash and it's got loads of elements as well in it. So any paper pad that you've got in your stash that has got something like this in it will work for tonight's crafting. We're just going to put together some simple easy cards. I'm going to show you how to step up those cards and then another little kind of step up from that. So we're going to get started. I've gone ahead and cut out all my elements. I've cut the strips out of the strip backgrounds. I've got my little sentiments cut out and I've got these little squares cut out as well, ready to go on my cards. So the first thing that I go ahead and do when I'm making some bulk card making is work out what size I'm going to do my cards as. So these little squares here measure out to be four by four inches which is a really, really nice size. And I've actually got loads of envelopes that I've been picking up over the past little while of different sized envelopes. And I have got some that will work well for this. So I've gone ahead and cut myself some four and a quarter by four and a quarter cards, as well as some four and a half by four and a half, I believe, or possibly five by five, um, or just under five by five inch cards as well. So I went for two sizes. I wanted to do one size where I could just do a little backing behind it like this. And then I wanted to do a bigger size where I could have the chance to add more elements and add more papers if I wanted to. So for the first little part of this video, I'm gonna show you what you can do with just the paper pad itself. So we're not adding in extra elements. We're not adding in more stuff. We're just using the paper pads. So I've got my smaller cards here, my bigger cards up there on the top. I've cut out some backings out of the decorative papers. I've cut some matting layers and I've got all my leftover scraps as well. And then I cut some longer strips. I've also got the shorter strips there that you can see on the top that are left over from cutting my papers down. So I've got plenty of scraps to work with. I've got plenty of the elements to work with. And we're just going to have a lot of fun. And it's going to be sped up quite a lot. So I'm sorry if you don't like sped up videos. Um, but I wanted to share with you my process of how I go through and make bulk card making with a very simple design. And then I wanted to share with you how you can step that up. But I didn't want the video to be three hours long, which is what my footage was originally. So I've cut it down from three hours to 15 minutes. <laughs> so here's my scrap pile that I've got from cutting all those elements out and the backings out. So I start by working out what backing paper I want, what the topper I want to be, and I kind of coordinated them. So, oh, that sounded really bad. Coordinated them, coordinated them. Still can't say it. So I'm just going ahead and matching the top one to the back panel. So you can see I've got that cute little pink design and they just work well together because they're all designed to just match. 
Um, and then to kind of finish that one off, I just added some gems. You can switch it up and take some of the strips. You don't have to add the layers. I did have a lot more footage than this, but I thought I'll bore you to death if I show you every single card. So I kind of shared with you a few different designs on how you can put these together. So next one uses a strip and I'm going to pop this element up. So I've backed it with a bit of the colored um, paper and now I'm just going to pop it up off the card and then I'll come in later and add probably some gems or some details to it. So the first thing I usually do is build up my cards, make them all up and then I embellish them and decorate them at the very end when I'm all done and then I can kind of bulk do that as well. So here I've taken one of the backing papers, I've added a strip there, which is one of my scrap strips, and then I'm going to go ahead and mount this one onto some of that colored paper, and then stick it down on the top. Now all these cards that I did, um, okay, so what happened was I made up a whole bunch of these cards, I split it into two different nights of creating, and I knocked a pint glass of water all over my desk. So I lost a lot of the elements and had to recut a bunch of them. But I didn't lose any of the cards, thank goodness. All the cards were safe, but I totally soaked my whole entire desk. Here are all my cards from that first session I did on that first night where I knocked my water everywhere. Um, I got through quite a lot of them, and this was only a couple hours of crafting, maybe two or three, not including all my cutting time. Just kind of, well, actually including my cutting time, I think. Um, so I kind of got through all the big ones, and I started working my way through, but basically... If I didn't spill that glass of water, <laughs> I would probably have at least half a paper pack of each of the paper pads left. It is what I wanted to get my point around. So you can see all the cards I'm making here. In the end, I've made probably 20 to 30 cards and I've still got loads of paper packs left and loads of scraps to work with as well. And I'll show you some ideas what you can do with the scraps. So those were my basic cards and now we're going to take it and step it up. Um, I'm showing you them again. <laughs> Um, because I think I forgot. So this is tonight when I was crafting in my office um, and I wanted to start out by sharing with you all the ones that I had previously done. So a really good selection, some mounted with foam, some not. We're going to take it and step it up a little bit more now. So I've got all the smaller elements and the smaller cards here and I had a few of the bigger ones left over as well. So here's my massive pile of scraps because I did have to go through and cut a whole bunch more again because I dumped that water. So I have quite a lot of scraps now. And I'm just taking them and folding them in half and working with whatever size they end up being. So I'm gonna go ahead and use another scrap and add a strip onto that end. And then I go ahead and dig through my favorite jar in the world, which is my little strips jar, which I keep on my desk and I put all my scrap strips in there. And I just started playing with that and adding some elements from that onto my cardstock. This is where I'm gonna step it up a bit by adding in extra elements, adding in extra scraps that I've got lying around. So to make this a little bit thicker, cause it is paper, it's a really thick paper, but it's not cardstock. So to make it kind of bulk out a bit more, I'm using one of the scraps of my um, colored card stock or paper to add onto the inside to kind of make it a bit more substantial, a bit more solid. So there's a finished little notelet card. Here's another scrap bit of paper, it's a little bit bigger. I go ahead and measure all these so I know what size to cut the inside at. And I'm just going ahead and adding a strip down the middle. Some of my beautiful um, strips left over of my foil card. And then I add my little sentiment, which comes from the little pack of paper that I cut out right in the middle, popped up on some foam tape. And then again, I'm going to go ahead and add that um, colored card stock or paper to the inside to kind of make it a little bit more substantial. So I go ahead and measure it. And then I just go with one eighth of an inch smaller for that little bit of paper to go on the inside. And that's how a great way of how you can use up those little scraps and make up some cute little note cards as well. Um, just to have to give out and use. So I've got all my cards done and ready to go. Some of them are decorated, these ones are not. And I've got some of these extra elements because again, I had to go and cut them out a second time. So I dug out my dies and this is how we're gonna step it up. I've got my circle dies and I've got my square dies. These are the nestables range. I will do my best to link everything down below for you. So if you wanna check anything out, it should be in the description box. You just hit the little arrow and it'll pop open for you and you should be able to find all the links in there. Now Craft World, uh, Craft World, Craft Stash ships worldwide, which is where most of this stuff has come from. I have an addiction to that shop. Um, and they do have an American website as well. Uh, and then the normal UK website is the one that I believe ships worldwide. 
Um, I don't know the shipping prices and I apologize. I do know that since Brexit, it has been absolutely rubbish. Um, and I know that Craftstash are probably working on that. So here I've gone ahead and die cut out my circles and I've kind of gone with the pattern that's on there and just picked circles that were close to that size. And I popped that circle up. So you can see it from the side that the paper on the top matches what's underneath. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and add in some glitter pen onto all the leaves that are going around the edge. And then I'm taking my, um, what is this stuff called? Glossy accents. And I am adding it onto the flowers to make them kind of pop just a little bit more, add a little bit more interest to the background. Now, <laughs> I wanted this video to be nice and short and I had such a hard time because I couldn't stop. I just could not stop. I had so many ideas and every time I would sort of take a breath and be like, oh, maybe I'm done my video now. I just kept going and kept going and kept going. There are millions of things you can do. If you are willing to step it up, if you're willing to get some dyes out and have a bit more fun, you can do so much more with these. Now this one, I wasn't sure what I was doing. I just thought I would cut out all the elements and see what we, what we got and where we were going. Uh, in the end, I just decided to go with just the silver circle behind and popped up the center element, which just happened to be the same as the one underneath. You don't really know it's the same. It doesn't really matter. I was just having fun and I was die cutting and trying to work out what might look kind of cool. But I was also conscious that it was Saturday night and I want the video up on Saturday night as well. So I did have a little drink next to me and I was very careful not to knock my drink, but I am enjoying my Saturday night with you guys. So that one I added on some Nouveau drops to finish it off. This one I've decided I wanted to get some square borders that could kind of complement the squares on that panel. So I die cut out all these ones that are nice and close together and it gave me that perfect little box and I absolutely love how this card turned out. It wasn't planned at all but I just thought, I just kind of was rolling with it. I was just playing and having fun and I love it. When you look at it, it's so cute because it's got this element of glitter to it. So I decided to come in with these dies, which I shared with you just a few seconds ago and forgot because I was babbling on to tell you what they were, but I have those just paper discovery dies and they have the cutest little kind of bug elements in it and some leaves and some flowers. So I took out all the smaller dies out of that set and I've just gone ahead and layered it up four times with some pearlescent cardstock that I had scraps left over from my cards and stuck that on. And here are the rest of the cards that I did off screen. So I did the same thing with the circles. I just found it to be a really fun pattern. Popped it up with one of the elements, kind of cut some fishtails into the little sentiment. Here's the square one I just did with you with the little bumblebee. And then I did the butterfly as well with some foil card. And these are all my scraps. So all the foil card is just scraps that was sat next to my desk that I used. Here's that original one with the glossy accents, mostly dried. And the other one there at the top corner, oh yeah, there's the Nouveau drops. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I pointed that out because it was hard to see on camera. And here's the one where I did the centers of the flowers and the glossy accents as well. So this is a great way to sort of step up the cards that you're making with this kind of paper pad and how you can kind of use your dies and work with it. And again, for the third time, <laughs> I'm showing you those cards. Yeah, clearly I'm so proud of myself for making all these cards. I'm like, I'll just keep showing you every two seconds. So... I thought, what can we do now? Let's make some gift packs. Let's give some of these away because I got like 30 or 40 of them now. So I've got these little paper bags. They are six and a half by eight and a half inches. They are for candy, sweets, treats, um, you know, school fates, uh, little fairs. You'd get a donut in it kind of thing. You can buy them in bulk on eBay, Amazon, AliExpress. They're great. They can fit nice big things in it. You can make a beautiful little pack of them. So here's my envelopes. I got five and a half in by five and a half inches envelopes that I picked up and it fits these cards just nicely. I like them slightly bigger because if they've got some foam tape on them, then you have that ability to have that dimension on your card and still fit your envelope. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it in my little envelope. Now, in retrospect, you'll see the next one's done properly. I should have decorated my envelope, then sealed it. <laughs> because I go ahead and I seal it and stick on the little sentiment at the top, which I cut out just for you, um, is what those say if you can't read them. And then I decided to stick on some cute little element that I had left over and then realized I've got all these bulky cards underneath and I'm going to try and glue this on. But anyways, I shifted the cards and managed to glue it on nice and evenly. 
And then the second one, I wanted to kind of step it up a little bit more again. So I'm taking my more dimensional cards, the ones that have got more elements or character to them, like some foam tape. I'm going to put those ones in this envelope. I'm going to take another one of my scrap bits of cardstock. I'm going to trim it down so it's not as long and not as fat. And I'm taking a edge punch. And this is just a decorative edge punch. If you've got decorative scissors, those will work. Or you could cut freestyle a little design in. I just didn't want plain paper. I wanted some kind of funky edge. So I got out a little edge punch, punched out the edges, stuck that element down, and then decided, oh, I love this holographic card. Let's stick some of that on there as well. So stuck a little bit of that on, and then that one on the top to kind of finish off the front. And then I go ahead and stick my cards in the bag close it with my staples and then I added on the sentiment on the top with a little bit of foam tape so it's got a little bit more dimension to that one and that finishes off my video for tonight so I hope you enjoyed it I hope you had fun I hope it gives you inspiration to dig out your paper pads have a look at what you've got in your stash see if any have those elements for them and then if you feel like going for gold dig out some dies and have some more fun but if not keep it simple and enjoy it and if you just enjoy card making why not make it into a gift and give it away to someone so that they can use them thank you so much for joining me i look forward to seeing you next week uh, have a great saturday night bye